Welcome in, guys, to the 304 Podcast, right here on YouTube. I'm your host, Sam Man, along with Mr. Marcus Dean. What's up, buddy? Hey, what is going on, Facebook? What is going on, YouTube? Welcome into the show. We're going to keep these videos coming. We get closer and closer to the kickoff of uh, college football season. Um, once that happens, my focus is will turn more to, uh, towards the West Virginia Mountaineers. But guys, if you haven't already hit that subscription button, leave the comments down below. We're going to dive right in tonight. We're going to do our deep dive on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeehaw. My, my front pick for the big for the Big Twelve this year. I think they're they're primed and ready. Um, they just got to beat Baylor. <laughs> yep, that's um, it. Twenty twenty one. Saw them go twelve and two. They were eight points from being undefeated. Um, you know, lost to Iowa State. That one was kind of inexcusable, three points. Yep. Baylor beat them in the Big 12 championship by five points. They did go on to the Fiesta Bowl where they beat Notre Dame by, you know, two or three points. It wasn't a, a huge win, but they won. Yeah. Um, what's changed this year for Oklahoma State on the coaching front? And tell me a little bit about where their uh, transfer portal uh ins and outs, and the recruiting okay. comes? Well, I mean, Mike Gundy is coming back for his 17th season, one of the longest tenure coaches in college football. It's hard to believe 17 seasons. Mike Gundy has been roaming the sidelines there at his alma mater, which they give him what he wants. He's happy there. He played there. He gets a coach there. Why not stay there until he wants to retire? Uh, Michael, let me ask you real quick, Marcus. Um, let me ask you real quick. Mm-hmm. 149 and 69 since 2005, 11 and 5 in ball games. It, are we looking at a Hall of Fame coach in the making? Absolutely. Uh, he just he just got to find a figure out a way to win the big one, win a natty. If he can win a natty, I I, I say that would put him in the Hall of Fame. They if if they, they came close in 2011, they should have played for the BCS National Championship in 2011. But let's just say politics prohibited that. Um, SEC politics prohibited that, to be more specific. Um, but in, in turn, I think I think if they can get things going, I think they could be a dark horse for the uh, college football playoffs. Uh, they bring a new defensive coordinator, uh, Derek Mason, uh, to uh, replace uh, their outgoing defensive coordinator, coordinator who went to Ohio State. They bring in a top-tier defensive coordinator, in my opinion. Uh, Derek Mason's been a very solid D, D coordinator everywhere he's been. Uh, they bring back uh, Casey Dunn to re, re, run the offense. He's also the associate head coach. Um, and, I mean, they bring back their quarterback, Spencer, who's going who's a great quarterback. Uh, they bring back a ton of talent on offense. Uh, and they brought back a very solid defense as well, a very, very good defensive line. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, but in terms of recruiting, they kind of had a lackluster performance in 2022 in terms of record, recruiting. They brought, only brought in 20 players. Mm -hmm. uh, they ended up 35th in the, in the rankings according to 247 Sports. Uh, they ended up third in the Big 12 and brought in four transfers. Well, I mean, you know, that's not too bad. I mean, they had they were so loaded. Um, yeah, but they really, you know, they lost a couple of key pl key players, but you know, in next man up mentality, yeah. you know, should get them through. You know, that thirty fifth in the nation, that's the problem. You know, third in the Big Twelve, I, I would assume behind Texas and Oklahoma. Yep, Texas and know, Oklahoma. Yep, you're exactly right. You'd still be thirty fifth in the country, but first in the Big Twelve, and that's not that does not bode well for the Big Twelve. So, no. Oklahoma State's got to find a way. Um, if they're going to be what I expect them to be when Oklahoma and Texas leave, they're going to have to get that up into the teens, into the mid teens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anywhere to keep between the Big 12. Relevant. relevant. They're going to they're gonna have to land anywhere between 10 to 15 every year to keep the Big 12 relevant, to keep the Big 12 on the up and up and having a chance to play for the college football playoffs. They're going to have to do that after Oklahoma and, and Texas leaves. Well, you were talking about uh, Spencer Sanders coming back. Um, he was first team all Big 12 last year, uh, threw for 2,800 yards and 20 touchdowns, ran for, I think, you know, 600 yards and, and a few scores. You know, he's back. Um, they lost their, their tailback. Um, they, had, they had another running back, I think, that, that portaled out. Uh -huh. But they've got two guys that's going to really fill that role, uh, Dominic Richardson and Jaden Nixon, yep. who – I mean, 
it looks like they're going to share the load and they're going to be a really formidable duo. Right. I mean, and, and looks, you know, to me, you know, it looks on paper. I mean, there's no rhyme, no reason. They should not be competing for a minimum of, of a New York six bowl. Uh, I think it's for them. It's the big 12 championship or bust for them because they're loaded on both sides of the ball. Uh, their defensive line uh, is really stout this year. Uh, they didn't lose very many, very much on defense. They brought back, I think, uh, eight eight starters, I believe it was on defense, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds about sounds about right. Um, and they're they're loaded they're loaded all over on defense. I mean, Derek Mason inherits you know a gold mine here, and in my opinion, he better not screw it up. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you come in with the defense that averaged you know four sacks a game. They were the number one sack defense in the country, the number two tackle for loss team in the country. You know, when you're when you're inheriting that. You know, you just have to go par for the course, and you're doing pretty good. Exactly, um, exactly. You just got you just got to right the ship. That's all you got to do is steer the ship. The only thing I'll say, you know, about holes in the offense or defense is one hole in the offense. Now, Spencer Sanders, he did he did play really well last year up till the Baylor game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he dropped I think it was four interceptions. Yeah, he Baylor didn't have a game against Baylor. Yeah, and, and he didn't play. He played good enough against Notre Dame to get the win. It wasn't the greatest performance. So he's gotta he's gotta elevate his play. You know, right. you can't can't have a game against a top tier opponent like Baylor where you drop four yeah. picks. You just can't do it. Yeah. I um, mean if if you want to be considered for the Heisman, if you want me to consider, you know, if that's something he's, you know, privy to do, which most players are I mean, he, he's got to find a way to play better in big games. And I think that's what's lacking with Oklahoma State. They they play well in games that they should win. Of course, they had the one hiccup against Iowa State last year. And every team, every year has a hiccup. They, they lose, they drop a game they shouldn't drop. And Iowa State was happened to be the one that Oklahoma State dropped last season. Well, and, and Heisman, and, you know, as far as Heisman goes, you know, anybody that doesn't have uh, Spencer Sanders on your short list, is a little crazy because yeah. looking at last year's stats, you know, 2,800 yards and 20 touchdowns, you're looking at Heisman level stats. Right. You get that up to around uh, 3,025 touchdowns. Yeah. Um, you know, you're looking at up to 30 uh, touchdowns. If you can do that, yeah. 30 touchdowns and 3,000 yards, you're ever bit in the conversation. Yeah. So he, he should be on your short list. Make sure you, you kind of watch that and the progress of that, I think. I think he's an outlier for a Heisman yep. run this year. Absolutely. Well, guys, this is the 304 podcast here on YouTube, Facebook. Click that button. Subscribe, please. Right now. Um, right now. And leave your comments. More importantly, I, we yeah. like the comments. Um, we like we to get learn some, we get some doozies. Guys. <laughs> we do get some doozies. And, and, you know, it's all about we like to learn about these teams and talk about yep. these teams. That way, if you're watching the video and you – you know, we're watching the Oklahoma State breakdown. Maybe you'll come out with something you didn't know, and you'll know what to look for when you watch them. And that's the goal yep. that we have. Yep. It's not necessarily educating anybody, but saying this is what we're going to watch. This is what we've researched. This is what we're going to look at. Maybe that's what you need to look at, too. Oklahoma State's schedule is rough. Um, you get past out, the first it's couple out of, of games. It's, laughable. it's out of conference is laughable. The out of conference is laughable. Laughable. Uh, they welcome in Central Michigan uh, week one. That's, That's a, a win. Then they welcome in Arizona State. Uh, that should be a win. That should be a win, but that could be their game where they screw up. And and the only reason I say that because um, Arizona State has a great coach in Herm Edwards, um, and he always has his players ready to play. It doesn't matter who he has. He can all, he can he can flat out coach the football. Yeah, I mean, they should win that game. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give them. A win. I'm not going to even call it a fifty. I'm not even going to call it a fifty-fifty no. game. It, it's more like 80-20, You better 90, win. 10, you better win. Um, it's a good thing that game's at home. I will say that. Yeah. Third game of the season, another home game. Uh, they take on uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's a win. That's a win. Fourth game of the season, the first test of the season, a road game at Baylor. Whew. Marcus. Whew. Now, we did a deep dive on Baylor, and we both made projections there. Yeah. 
but now we're a little more educated. So sometimes things do change as we become more familiar with teams and what they have coming back. Yeah. I'll let you take that game first. Does Oklahoma um, State have what it takes to beat Baylor at Baylor in the in the regular season? They do have the talent to beat Baylor. It will be a very good game. Uh, it should be your ABC game of the week. I hope, I would think it would be your ABC game of the week um, against Baylor and Waco. It's going to be a loud, ruckus, crazy crowd there in Waco. I wouldn't be surprised if College Game Day isn't call, isn't there for that game. Um, because be. it's, it should be there for that game because this is definitely going to be a uh, Big 12 um, championship preview, round one, per se. And I think round one is going to go to the Baylor Bears, only because they're at home and you got to give a three- or four-point edge to Baylor at home. I agree. Um, I think that uh, it's going to be a really good game, really close game, I hope. I hope uh, College Game Day is there. They should be. This is probably going to be, uh, I would imagine, a top 10 matchup uh, between the two. So. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be just a heavy hitting game. Um, but I think Baylor's going to pull that out. They're going to win, win round one, in my estimation. Yeah. So we, we agree. We're both at three and one. Um, Oklahoma State returns home and welcomes in the Texas Tech Red Raiders. I don't you know. The, I don't see any issues there. No. no. And then they follow that up with a road game at TCU. You know, going on the road in the Big 12, you never know what's going to happen. But I just don't see Oklahoma State going to, to TCU and losing. No, I don't, I don't think so either. So through six games, we're, we, we're in agreement at five and one. And then the next big game for the Cowboys, they welcome in the Texas Longhorns. Take it, Marcus. <laughs> well, uh, you know, as we talked on the Texas video, I think Texas is going to be in trouble this year. I mean, this, well, it's gonna, this is going to be a good game for Texas. This is going to be a proving game for Texas. If Texas can somehow find a way to beat Oklahoma State, then they could be relatively and say Texas is back. Uh, but I don't see that yet. I think Oklahoma State is too far ahead in terms of their defense. Uh, their offense is going to be every good, every bit as good as Texas. I think Oklahoma State takes this one away uh, in Stillwater. I agree. You know, coming to Stillwater and winning for Texas is going to be rough. I just yeah. don't, I don't see it happening. Um, even though, you know, Texas is one of those teams, they're coming in with a lot of hype behind them. Yeah. But we still don't see why. Exactly. No, not yet. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they upgraded a, a quarterback and, and, and all of that. But, you know, I'm still so, so down on Steve Sarkeesian that I just yeah. can't get – I can't get on that high horse with them. No, I can't, I can't get on that high horse either. No. So that puts them at 7-1 and one, going on the road to Kansas State. That's um, another dub. That's another really good game. Um, I just don't think K-State's going to have enough no. to beat Oklahoma no. State. Um, the following week, another road game. That'll be November the 5th, going to Kansas. <laughs> should not lose that game. No, that's another should not lose the game. Even though Kansas did beat Texas last year. Yeah, Kansas has a knack for sneaking up and beating people they're not supposed to beat. And, you know, Kansas was Texas' Achilles heel. And uh, Kansas State's always been Oklahoma's Achilles heel. And, you know, I hate to say this, but Iowa State's always Oklahoma State's Achilles heel. So. The next game, um, they go back home and bring in Iowa State. They lost to Iowa State last year by three points at Iowa State. Um, coming to Stillwater again, I don't think it's going to happen again this year. No, I, I think look I, for I, I look for Iowa State to be even further down this year than they were last yeah, year. Yeah, I think, I, think I, don't, I don't see Iowa State being able to pull a ball game this year. So there we have it, nine and one, going into bedlam. Bedlam. One of the coolest traditions in college football. One of the biggest rivalries. Yep. In college football, there's a lot of hate there. Go to Norman to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. Marcus, I'll let you. I'll let you speak first on what you think is going to happen in this game. Well, I think this is going to be a good game. Uh, I think Oklahoma's defense will be ready. Uh, my question is, is with Oklahoma State's offense, uh, not Oklahoma State, but Oklahoma's offense. If Oklahoma's offense is up to par, I think this is going to be a closer game than the extras think. 
Um, I'm sorry to do this to our pals in Oklahoma. Cody, I love you, brother. McFly, love you, brother. But the Pokies got you this year, my friend. The Pokies will win, and they will beat Oklahoma for Bedlam in Norman. I agree. Um, and I've said several times that I feel like Oklahoma is going to have a down year. Uh, and what a what a rotten down year it'll be oh, that when, would, they lose, that when, when they lose to Oklahoma State at home. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Oklahoma is trending in the right direction. Yeah. But you lost, you know, losing Caleb Williams, Spencer Rattler, you know. You lost a ton. You lost a lot. You lost your coach. You brought, even though you replaced their, your coach with a great, with an even, maybe even better coach, depending on how you look at it. It's going to take some time for him to build his style and his style of program. I think this will be an excellent game. Probably, uh, you know, it's going to be a ranked game. You know, yeah, Oklahoma absolutely. will be in the top probably 15, 20. Um, but I think Oklahoma State, uh, I'm riding high on them this year. I think they go in into same. Norman and pull it off. Absolutely same. I agree. Following that game, Oklahoma State returns home to take on their last game of the season. One of the most dangerous opponents of the season, the West Virginia Mountaineers. Now, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't think West Virginia will go to Stillwater and beat Oklahoma State. I don't think that will happen. However, coming if they do beat Oklahoma and they come into that game riding a little too high, they just might fall into that West Virginia trap of beating teams they shouldn't beat. I can't say West Virginia will beat them, but I, I will say if if we get to that point in the season where Oklahoma State does upset Oklahoma and Norman, they better watch out for the Mountaineers. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a step further. Um, I think with Oklahoma State coming in to ten and one, and probably West Virginia limps in. Probably, I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna say West Virginia is probably. Seven or eight wins by then. I, I I would I would feel comfortable giving West Virginia seven or eight wins right there. They're a seven and four or eight and three at this particular time. I'm comfortable giving West Virginia that 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 love right there. And with all of the high of a great campaign so far, ten and two, uh, we're 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 riding high at, at a ten and one right now. We're riding high. The Cowboys. They're looking at the playoffs, possible to playoffs. They're looking at the Big 12 championship. They're looking past West Virginia. And West Virginia goes into Stillwater, wins by one point on a last-second field goal. Go Mountaineers. You hear it here first. Mountaineers will beat Oklahoma State this year in Stillwater by one point. Well, I hope you're right. I hope I absolutely hope you're right. Um, like I said, I could see how West Virginia – could be that game that that snake in the grass that just yep. ruins your season. I yep. can see how that could w- would work out. Will yep. it work out? My prediction says no. So I've got them at eleven and one. You've got them at ten and two. So we're talking on the precipice of playing Baylor from again. our earlier breakdown again for the Big Twelve championship. Um, so there, there you have it, guys. It, it, it's almost like we're going to be replaying last year in the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Oklahoma slides a little bit more than they did last year. I think uh, I think West Virginia Baylor, are Oklahoma, but Baylor, Oklahoma State, Iowa State's going to slide. West Virginia is going to slide up, um, and, and you're just going to have some movement amongst yeah. the brands. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too major, but you know, Oklahoma State, Baylor. I think that's who you need to really be yeah. watching out for. So, yeah, you know, if you're just thinking off the top of my head, you got Oklahoma State or Baylor, or either one A or one B. Then you got I'm, I hate to say this, but you're gonna have you're gonna have Oklahoma right there at three, maybe Texas there at four because I think Texas will. You don't think Texas? I think four? Kansas State at four. Kansas State at four. Okay, I can see that. I, I'll give Kansas State at four, and I'm a and thinking, only but and only because they're gonna beat Texas and and bump yeah. Texas to five. Yep, yeah. and I'm gonna put I'm gonna, I'm gonna have West Virginia and Texas battling over that fifth spot. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right to me, guys. Well, guys, you heard it here first on the 304 podcast. Uh, Oklahoma State 11 and 1 to 10 and 2, beating Oklahoma at Bedlam in Norman. It's going to happen. Um, 
Guys, be sure to hit that subscription button. Leave your comments down below. We've got a couple more teams we're going to break down in the Big 12. We're going to do Oklahoma and West Virginia. Then we're going to move on and do a couple of packed pack teams. So yeah, let, us know, let us know uh, who you'd like for us to break down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, and, guys, I also want to kind of throw this out there. Be on, be on the lookout for a, a random live show on Sunday around 3 o'clock. Got a very special guest coming on. We're not sure if we're going to do it live or record it, but it's going to be Super Bowl champion Brad Johnson's coming Woo-hoo! on. So um, we're excited about that, but we're just not sure how how we're, how we're doing it just yet. But uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is the 304 Podcast. 304 guys, out.